Question 9a. Gas liquid chromatography involve a stationary phase and mobile phase. Part 1. Name or describe in detail a suitable substance that could be used for each phase. For the GC, stationary phase, sometimes it can be liquid, sometimes it can be solid, depends. Uh, but uh, most likely it will be non-polar liquid that coated on the wall of the column and the mobile phase that we use normally is inner gas you can put nitrogen gas helium gas or argon gas a mixture of three organic compounds is separated using gas liquid chromatography and figure 9.1 is the uh, the chromatogram so showing three different peaks okay, for the A, B and C and the area under each peak represent the amount of each substance okay, part 2 explain the meaning of retention time very easy the time that the substance stay in the column means how long it stay in the column and get eluted later so these are all the retention time for the A, B, C so we know that A is going to elute faster than others C is retained in the column longer time than A and B means C is going to have a better interaction with the column A is has the uh, least interaction with the column uh, that's the meaning so again retention time is a time that the substance stay in the column better interaction or better uh, greater attraction it will stay longer okay part three calculate the percentage of B in the mixture very easy calculate the total area first okay so calculate all this area area A B and C and sum it up okay area A so you just use half times 30 times 2 this one so the height is 30 so it's 2 minutes and here is 100 and it's about uh, the 3 minutes right okay and this one is uh, about 20 25 and this one is two minutes so therefore you can calculate the area accordingly so it will be around 205 okay percentage of B we can use the area of B over total area times 100% we get 73.2% part B Complete table 9.1 to give the numbers of peaks in the carbon-13 enamel for these five isomers with the molecular formula C5H10O2 that has an ester group. Okay, so for the first isomer, okay, we just we just uh, look at the carbon, right, and we're going to. Uh, count the uh, non-equivalent carbons okay, so for the first isomer it has 1 2 3 4 5 different carbons so therefore you see 5 peaks in the carbon-13 enamel okay, for the second isomer okay, use <clears throat> the non-equivalent carbon is 1 two three four five so you see five peaks inside the carbon enamel do not think that one two and four five they are equivalent because there is a COO the ester group in between so the first two and the last two carbon then will not be equivalent that's why you see five peaks there okay so for this one the third isomer you see one, two, three, four, five, five peaks as well.
Okay, for the <coughs> fourth isomer, okay, you see this, huh? this, this CH3 and this CH3, they are equivalent. That's why you see one peak only. This carbon one peak, this carbon another one, another one. So total is one, two, three, four, four peaks only. Okay, so for the last isomer, okay, because these two CH3 also, they are equivalents, so you see one peak only. That's why you get one, two, three, four here. So you see four peaks there. So this is how to uh, identify the numbers of peaks in the uh, carbon-13 NMR from the structure. Okay, part C. State the numbers of peaks that would be seen in the proton NMR for this methyl butanoid. Name all the splitting pattern as well. Okay, so first, you at least you must know how the structure looks like. Okay. Is proton enamel so we just refer to proton okay so we start from left so this one this CH3 will couple with these two proton this and this so it's one plus two you get triplets so this CH3 means uh, this proton this three you you see a triplet there and for the second signal so these two proton will be okay <clears throat> will be the one group so one okay then this one plus three plus another two so it will couple with these five protons and it will form a multiplet And for the okay, third signal, these protons will couple with only this and this. So it's one plus two, you get triplets. Okay, this one, because the is uh, the adjacent uh, atom is oxygen, it's not carbon, there is no CH or CH2. Uh, so therefore it's just a singlet so you get a few a splitting pattern singlet triplets and multiplets okay here so of course again the numbers of peaks is four peaks four four different protons uh, uh, environment okay one two three four different protons environment of four different uh, proton chemical environment Okay, later we, we will uh, come back to this structure okay and uh, uh, to choose which one is it okay D part D D and E are both ester with molecular formula C5H10O2 their proton spectra are shown in figure 9.2 and 9.3 so we look at 9.9.2 first okay so from this 9.2 we have to choose the correct isomer Okay, there are five isomers given in the table just now. So we have to choose which one is D and E. Okay, D is has <clears throat> four, four signals. So this one is quartet, quartet, triplets, triplets. Okay, so from here, we roughly uh, will know what is the isomers about. What is D? Because this one will give you a singlet. Okay, in this um, figure 9.2, this, this uh, uh, proton NMR, okay, no singlets there. That's why this one cannot be the D. And this one also will give you a singlet. Therefore, also cannot be D. This one also will give a singlet, actually. So also, it will not give uh, the uh, this... Uh, uh, proton NMR. Okay, and of course this one also. Okay, also will give a singlet. So therefore, this one also cannot be the D. The one that only can uh, uh, produce the this proton NMR is this. 
Okay, ethyl propanoid. Okay, so see how it's uh, produced the triplets and quartex. Okay, so from here, we know that. Okay, we start from left, eh? left from this. So this CH3 will couple with these two proton and it will form triplets. Right, so means one of this. Okay, one of this. Either this or this. Okay, uh, we cannot really decide because uh, this one also could be. Right, so we know that it will form triplets. Okay, it's somewhere here. And this one, this CH2 will only couple with these three protons. So one plus three, so you it will form quartet. And this quartet must be around uh, two to three ppm. So means this is the one. So means this CH2 will give this peak. This CH3 will give either one of this. And this one will be another quartet. This CH2 will couple with this, this, this proton. One plus three, you get quartet. And this quartet must be around uh, three to four because this CH2 is next to electronegative atom, uh, which is oxygen. So therefore, this one confirm means this one, this quartet, okay, must form this signal. This quartet must belongs to this CH2. And this one, this CH3, this one, let me clear this. Okay, this CH3 as one group coupled with this proton and this proton give a quartet. Sorry, give a triplet. And these triplets also need to be around uh, 1 to 2, right? Which means what, uh, either one of this, right? Okay, so therefore we are quite sure that this molecule or this isomer means the ethyl propanoid okay, will be D. Okay, another one, the proton NMR of the compound E. So we see the doublets here, very intense doublet, and multiplet, and the singlet. So it could be, now it could be, okay, this one cannot be. So it could be this, 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 or this. Okay, so let's look at which one can form doublet first. Of course, this one can. Okay, so this one cannot form doublets because it only can form. Okay, this one it will be one plus two, so it's form triplets. This one will form multiplets. This one will form triplets. This one will form singlet. So this one cannot form doublet, so it cannot be E. This one will form singlet. This one will form triplets. Okay, one plus two uh, here. One, two. So th this will form triplets. This will form multiplet. This will form one plus two. So it's form triplets. Okay, therefore this one cannot form doublet. It cannot be E. Okay, this one again, singlet. This one is 1 plus 2 triplets. This one will form multiplet because 1 plus 2 plus another 2 is form multiplet. This one also form multiplet. This one will form triplets. 1 plus okay, 1 plus these 2. So this one will form triplets. Therefore, these 3 cannot be E because it can form, cannot form doublet. Okay, only this one can form the doublets here. Why? Okay, because these two CH3, these protons, they are equivalent. And this six proton will only couple with this hydrogen. So it's one plus one is two. 
So means it's from tablets. This proton, this six proton will form tablets. And how about this proton? This proton as one will couple with six protons here. So it will form multiplets here. And it must be around uh, 2 to 3 ppm. So it's correct. Now, this one is a singlet because the adjacent uh, atom is oxygen. There is no CH there. Therefore, this will be singlets only. And this singlet must be around 3 to 4 because this CH3 is next to oxygen. So it's here. So it means this one produce this one. Okay, this one produce this one. And these two CH3 will produce this one. So we are quite sure this NMR spectrum is produced by this isomer. So this will be E. Now this is how we deduce and look at the structure. I okay, hope you will understand and you can learn. Okay, after you identify, then you should know uh, this is a structure. Draw the display formula for the D and E, right? So, okay, part two. Spectrum D uh, includes a quartet at 4.1 ppm. Identify the protons responsible for this quartet Okay, on your structure in part 1, label the protons with letter F. Of course, quartet is this one. This one. Uh, okay, so for this one, quartet around 4.1. So again, uh, we, sh we go back to the NMR spectrum here. Okay, what it means is actually, what it means is actually this one. Quartet at 4.1 ppm this one is form produced by this CH3, CH2 this CH2 coupled with this CH3 form a quartet so now it's asked why is form quartet why this one form quartet because very easy okay this CH2 okay, is coupled with these three protons, isn't it? Because of these three protons, it can form quartet. That's the reason. Because there are three protons on adjacent or on neighboring carbon. That's all. Okay, part three. The spectrum of E has a doublet at 1.1 ppm. Identify the protons responsible for this doublet on your structure and label this uh, with letter G. Explain why this bit has chemical shift of 1.1. Very easy. Okay, so these six protons, they are the one that produce the, the doublets at 1.1 ppm, as I told you just now. So you just label G here, right, for the protons. And it's asked why it have chemical shift 1.1. And then you have to refer to the table just now. Okay. 0 0.9 to 1.1. The environment of proton is alkane. That's the reason why, no? Environment of proton is alkane. So it will give the uh, around 1 ppm. So very easy. So you just need to explain because their proton environment is alkane. So therefore, the doublet is around 1.1. Okay, I hope you understand. And thank you.